Good morning and welcome. We're especially glad to welcome Pastor Misty back to, uh, after two weeks of vacation, although I think her second week of vacation was spent partly preparing a sermon for this morning. Uh, I do have uh, every confidence that she will join us by the time it's time to preach this morning. Uh, she is in the building. Greetings also to those who will view this service later and to any guests who we have with us here in person today. It's good to see you. The New Testament scripture for today begins, and let us consider how to provoke one another. Well, let me take a stab at that. You may have seen in the news that the uh, CDC now recommends indoor masking for both vaccinated and unvaccinated people who live in areas of high or substantial COVID-19 transmission, and Lancaster County currently is in the high range. Throughout the pandemic, we have sought to follow the guidance of the CDC and state officials, but this time around, the state has not mandated that people follow the CDC guidance. So we had a, a meeting of the minds this week to decide what we'll do at church. And here is our statement in its entirety. We encourage the wearing of face masks for all activities in the church building. So that's where we are until the CDC guidance changes or until the transmission rate comes down or something else happens to prompt us to change that policy. I personally am not eager to mask up again and I can't imagine that anyone is. Uh, it feels like we're moving in the wrong direction, but our position all along has been that we wanna follow the guidance of health professionals and do our part to prevent the spread of a potentially fatal virus. So, so we encourage the wearing of face masks for all activities in the church building. It looks like that message has, has gotten out and we thank you for, for doing uh, what you can for that. So I trust I have successfully provoked a number of you with this news, uh, just like the scripture says, we try to be a biblical people uh, here. I did leave a little of that Hebrews verse off. It doesn't end with provoking, but instead says, and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. So that's a little bit different and we look forward to, to hearing what Misty has to say about the importance of Christians worshiping, studying, and fellowshipping together. Iron sharpening iron, as uh, the proverb of the day puts it. On Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., we have an opportunity for fellowship. We're looking forward to the International Fun Day outside here at the church. You may have been reading about it in the Friday Bulletin for a number of weeks. We have musician Stu Huggins, an Irish dance group, our own Jerry Brown and his capuchin monkey, and lots of international themed activities. The heart of the event will be a number of tables representing various countries with activities for kids and adults. You can go around and get your passport stamped from each country and earn a valuable prize. I think it's a car or something like that. I'm not, I'm not sure. There will be uh, free hot dogs and drinks. We think this is going to be a good activity to help us meet some of our neighbors and maybe make some connect connections that will help us be a stronger presence in the community. There still are a few volunteer slots to be filled. There's a sign-up sheet out here on the uh, table at the, at the, in the gathering place. A couple people needed to set up and tear down and things like that. If you're available and want to uh, help with the event, you can sign up out there uh, this morning. Next Sunday, we invite you to come a little early. Andrew Lefevre and Carolyn and I will be reporting on this summer's Church of the Brethren Annual Conference at nine o'clock in the chapel. So you can come and grab a cup of coffee and a donut and join us. We'll be showing the conference video uh, and offering a few reflections. We will not be telling you about our trip or where we stayed because it was a totally online conference this year, but we do hope to help, help you keep in touch a little bit with what's happening uh, in the larger church. After missing last year due to the pandemic, the 2021-22 Starlight Tea Concert Series is looking uh, to kick off on Saturday, September 11th with the Tapestry Cello Ensemble. The series schedule was printed in this past week's Friday Bulletin, along with a form that you can use if you would like to help underwrite the expenses of this series. If you missed the email version, printed versions of that Friday Bulletin are always available out here in the literature rack, uh, kind of around the corner from the women's bathroom, so you can pick one up there. With uh, Emery DeWitt's retirement, the Starlight Tea Series is now being planned by a capable committee led by, led by Jenny Mackey, so we're glad that, uh, for her leadership. We look now to Suzanne to lead us in our call to worship. Good morning. If you haven't already done so, you probably should turn to the hymn that we're going to sing right after the call to worship. That's on page 420 in your hymnal. And uh, I would like you to stand and remain standing for the hymn. 
The responsive call to worship is on page six of your bulletin. We stand before you, Lord, to proclaim your greatness. You call us to care for each other with support, wisdom, learning, and growth. Help us to be faithful to our calling. We, we thank you for the gift of each other, and we praise you for the wisdom found in every single one as we live our lives together. We use our minds to study your creation and your word. We use our eyes, hands, and ears to learn, and our mouths to discuss, question, and probe. Make us faithful to your desire for us to learn and grow together. We celebrate ideas, words, skills, and gifts. We celebrate imagination, instruments, and voices. We celebrate newness and the kind of change that brings others to know your saving grace. All of it, Lord, is a part of your world and your plan. Your world is all inspiring, Lord, and your plan is perfect. Lord, we thank you for teachers and preachers, for lay leaders and those who are new and learning both to follow and to lead. We thank you for those who remain students, who see the wonder of your ways unfolding before them as they study, discern, and move with the times that are before us. We thank you for the Bible, for church, and for each other, so that we might become more like you together. Lord, thank you for the body that meets in this place and for the sure knowledge that we don't walk alone. Help us to learn and to grow together with joy. Nudge us to set higher goals when the way looks easy and to use the full potential you've given us. Show us where to serve you further, using what we have learned together to meet the challenges of your plan together, even when we don't fully understand the plan. Help us to be faithful to the future you have laid out for us. Give us a desire to learn and to share what we know. Give us strength and energy. Give us a desire to do our very best for the sake of others. Teach us to make our own desires a distant afterthought. We praise you, Lord, and we give you all the honor and glory. Amen.
As we come to our time of prayer, we're aware of yet another tragedy in Haiti. An earthquake struck there yesterday morning, and I'd like to read portions of uh, prayer concerns shared by Brethren Disaster Ministries. It says, the people of Haiti and Haitian Church of the Brethren members are confronted with devastating damage, injuries, and more deaths from a 7.2 magnitude earthquake that struck the southern part of the country uh, on Saturday morning. Please extend your prayers and support to our Caribbean neighbors who have endured crisis after crisis. The earthquake comes in the midst of political unrest from ongoing riots and protests and the assassination of the Haitian president on July 7th. The compounding of these crises plus hurricanes and food insecurity continues even as the country has not recovered from the weaker 7.0 magnitude earthquake in 2010 that destroyed much of the capital city. Yesterday's earthquake epicenter was in the southwest in an area rebuilding after extensive damage from Hurricane Matthew in 2016. The Joint Brethren Disaster Ministries and Haitian Church of the Brethren response to the hurricane rebuilt many homes and led to a new church plant. Haitian church members report that the temporary church building was destroyed in the earthquake, along with the homes of some members and some church members also have been injured. So far, uh, news outlets are reporting hundreds of deaths, but it seems likely that that number will climb uh, into the thousands as more is, is learned about the, the scope of the tragedy. In coming weeks and months, a response plan will be developed and U.S. Brethren will be called on to support uh, that response to help rebuild. I invite you now to pray with me. Triune God, on this first day of the week, we come to you again to praise you for who you are, to thank you for what you have done and what you do, to confess our sins and seek forgiveness, and to make our requests known to you. You are a great and mighty God who is worthy of our praise. You are our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, three persons in one. We thank you for your creative power and the ways you have revealed yourself to us through the vastness, the beauty, and the intricacy of your creation. We thank you for Jesus, who lived and died and rose again to redeem us from the power of sin. And thank you for sending your spirit to guide us and sustain us in our daily lives. Gracious God, we thank you today for the gift of our fellow believers who encourage us in our faith. Rejoice when we rejoice and weep when we weep. Help us to help each other in times of need and use us to provoke one another to love and good deeds rather than merely provoking one another. God, in these fractious times, we ask that you would give us patience and unite us as believers in and followers of Jesus so that people might truly see in our fellowship the promise of a new humanity. When we disagree, help us to do it agreeably so that even in our differences, we might witness to the difference that Jesus makes in our lives. Forgiving God, we confess that too often we prioritize our own wants above the good of the whole, caring more about what we want than what others need or what you desire for us in your world. Forgive us when our focus on ourselves fractures community. Forgive us for the gap that exists between the faith we proclaim with our mouths and the faith that we sometimes demonstrate with our lives. Forgive us for both our moral failures and failures of imagination that prevent us from seeing where your spirit may want to lead us. Open our eyes and hearts to the needs of those close to us and far away. Caring God, this morning we pray for the people in Haiti, including members of our own denomination. We ask that your love and healing will surround those who are injured, comfort those who have lost homes and family members, and strengthen those who even now are involved in search and rescue. Use us as instruments of God's peace and to bring hope to God's struggling people in Haiti. God, the needs of this world sometimes seem overwhelming. We pray for people suffering from wildfires and excessive heat in our country and elsewhere. We pray for people in Afghanistan who have suffered through 20 years of war and now face more conflict and loss of freedoms. We pray for people who are sick from COVID and for overwhelmed medical staff in Florida and Texas hospitals and other places in the world where people who now are dying could have had their lives spared by a simple shot in the arm. Save us, Lord, from this pandemic and save us from ourselves. 
We lift up members of our own church family who face struggles. We pray for recovery from surgeries, healing from illness, relief of pain, comfort and grief. Show us ways to support and care for each other. God, we also pray that you'll help us be a witness here close to home. We pray for next Saturday's International Fun Day and ask you to use it to make connections with people in our neighborhood. Help us to make a difference to the people around us that this church might be a beacon. We pray all of this in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Today's scriptures are from the Old Testament in Proverbs and from Hebrews in the New Testament. In Proverbs we read, iron sharpens iron and one person sharpens the wits of another. And in Hebrews 10 verses 24 and 25 it says, and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Looking forward to Misty's message. with the 
brightness and the glory of the Lord. Arise, arise and shine forth, O glorious dawn. Arise, you are called to spread his word abroad. Arise and shine forth a light into the nations, a beacon of salvation, a standard o'er the earth. Arise and shine forth to fill the world in darkness with the brightness and the glory of the Lord. Arise, arise and shine forth. A glorious dawn for today in our wisdom series that we're in the middle of here, I started thinking about my friends. Have you ever tried to put your friends into categories? I think most of us have done this in one way or the other. This group of friends is close enough to go on vacation with. We could wake up in the morning and stand to see each other in our jammies. This group is close enough to have over for a barbecue, and I know these friends well enough to sit next to them at a church fellowship event or a funeral meal. And these ones I greet in passing and so forth. Here's a recent example for me. After a little more than a year as your pastor, I came into the church office one day having visited one of our sisters who has cats. Now, don't get me wrong, I love cats, but I was wearing black pants. I was concerned about going on my next pastoral call with cat hair on my pants, so I sweetly smiled and said to our church administrator, Tiffany, how close do you think we've become in the past year? She said without skipping a beat, no, I am not going to pick cat hair off your butt. <laughs> I said, I have a lint roller. She said, that I will do. In the midst of the cat hair removal operation, the details of which I will leave to your imagination, Tiffany said, Jeff Rill never asked me to do this. <laughs> no two people are exactly alike, which means that no two friends will ever have the same way of relating to each other. I've always said that a true friend will tell you when you have spinach on your teeth, but I'm sure there are some of you who could never bring yourselves to tell anyone that, no matter how close you feel to them. 
Some friends we can trust to help us with certain tasks, while we would never ask another friend to help us with the same task. We have some close friends who will never say a critical word about anything we have ever said or done or are thinking. But if we're truly fortunate, we'll have at least one friend who will be honest with us and offer us constructive criticism, hopefully with a little grace, but the kind of criticism that will help us to improve ourselves and our walk with Christ. And if we're really blessed, we'll have that kind of relationship with each other here in our church, all of us together. And friends, I believe that is possible for us. Today's proverb helps us to understand that God values that kind of interaction among his people. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron. One person sharpens the wits of another. In other words, interaction with other believers helps us all to become wise. But how can we do that without first having a little iron for ourselves? We do have to have our own heads and our hearts in God's word in order to be ready to help to sharpen someone else. In Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus quotes Deuteronomy, reminding us one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, we need the Bible just as much as we need food for our bodies. Our body turns food into energy so we can live. Food is fuel. No fuel, no energy. Food nourishes us so that we can function. Now, you've been hungry before, haven't you? Have you ever started to be so hungry you shake just a little bit? You feel weak because you need to eat. I've been accused of being the kind of person who gets hangry. You know, you get a little angry with your hunger and you need a Snickers bar according to the commercials. Jesus says we need spiritual fuel. I'll just spit the words out, you sort them. <laughs> we need spiritual fuel and nourishment food for our spirits because when we become weak and lack spiritual energy that's when satan can attack us best of all he loves that when we're not feeding our spirits the world becomes a fearful threatening place that feeds our anxieties our worries and our insecurities we don't have spiritual fuel and satan sees that and says now i'll get you the Bible is a storehouse of spiritual food. Just the way physical food feeds our bodies, Jesus says we cannot live by that physical food alone. We need spiritual fuel, every word that comes from the mouth of God. We read the Bible because we need to feed our souls so that we become more wise too. The Apostle Paul told new believer Timothy, and through him God is telling us, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Now, I know a lot of people say this verse tells you just what the problem is with Christianity. The scripture makes it feel like the Bible is just a rule book. It just tells us what we're doing wrong and makes us feel like we will never measure up. And I know that some Christians and some churches have been using the Bible that way for generations, but that's not what the Bible is for. It's not a book of rules. It's a personal conversation with God every time you open it. It's a guide. It's a helper when we can't find our way. And sometimes when we think we know the way, but we still need some wisdom to get there. The first time I went to Camp Swatara for district women's camp, I was assigned to a cabin that felt like it was a half mile from the restroom. It wasn't, it was only about 100 yards. Still a long way to go when you have to go in the middle of the night. As I was not a camper by nature, my husband had helped me decide what to bring. You'll need a flashlight, he said. I remember saying, I am not going to need a flashlight because I will be tucked up in that bunk before dark and I'm not leaving it till dawn. But I had to go about two o'clock in the morning, so I got the flashlight out and made my way, flashlight pinned to the blacktop path at my feet, 
from boys' cabin two to the restroom, because at women's camp, all the cabins get used, including the boys' cabins. And right there in front of me on the path was a huge snake. It just laid there, illuminated by my flashlight. And here's me standing all alone in the dark, listening to the faint sounds of a dozen snoring women behind the screens of the closest cabin. I'm staring at that snake and I'm thinking, how does that rhyme go that Bob taught me? Red and black, friend of Jack, red and yellow, kill a fella, or was it black and red, now you're dead? <laughs> and what about this snake? It's brown, what rhymes with brown? As I stood there, frozen, staring at this snake, it slithered off into the underbrush away from the path, and I prayed, thank you, God, for this flashlight, and please don't ever let Bob find out how important it was. <laughs> and now, as I look back, I think of the Bible as a flashlight like that. It guides us in the dark, and it keeps us from stumbling into danger. There are a lot of people out there stumbling around in the dark and walking right up to the snakes in the world because they're not reading the Bible. They're not gaining the wisdom that God has for them. You know these people, don't you? And maybe you're one of them. Life is not going as well as you had hoped and you can't figure out why. Or maybe life is going good, but it feels like you're missing something and you can't put your finger on it. Maybe you've never been much for reading the Bible or you used to, but it got out of the habit. It's not enough to just hear about it on Sundays, friends. Life is not going to work out that way. You need to have spiritual food every day. You would never just feed your body on Sundays. We need to all be in God's word on a regular basis, having that intimate conversation with him. Psalm 119, verse 105 reminds us, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That's the second scripture I ever memorized for my life. It's not a book of rules and corrections designed to make us feel unworthy. It is a light for us. It teaches us, it guides us, it gently corrects us by making us wiser and wiser the more we read it. It helps us to avoid the snarls and the snakes in our pathway. Now, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. The more wisdom we gain, the more we realize we can never know it all. Remember, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. That's why the Bible tells us to read and study it in community, too. And that brings us right back to today's proverb. Iron sharpens iron, and one person sharpens the wits of another. When we're being fed with spiritual food, when we are beginning to understand the gracious, loving nature of our God, then we begin to understand how everyone else deserves as much of that kind of grace and love as we can pour out. Then we're ready to sharpen another. Because, friends, the kingdom of God is not a me and God thing. It's a we and God thing. Unfortunately, we live in a world where that is just not cool. Not the done thing. To correct someone, to advise someone, to help someone to understand something better. So we keep it all to ourselves either out of fear of being corrected ourselves or out of a misguided sense of respect for the other's belief. I know, I know that this is a fine line and we must tread it carefully, but we are called to witness to our faith, to share it with others, and most importantly, to learn from each other, inviting others to do the same. We are called to take that flashlight at our feet and shine it so no one else trips over the snake either. We are called to sharpen each other. Now, I have not spent a lot of time sharpening iron in my life, none, in fact. But I have spent a lot of time with a hot iron in my hand. As a quilter, Ironing is a very necessary part of the process, and I've always liked that part of it. You meet a lot of quilters who say, if it wasn't for the ironing, this would be a great hobby. 
I'm the exception. At the risk of leading you to think I'm even weirder than maybe you already think I am, I have always loved to iron. Whenever my mom would get the ironing board out, I would run to my dad's dresser and get out all the hankies because that was all she would let me iron. There is something so satisfying about seeing the wrinkle disappear and watching the fabric smooth out under the heat of the iron. And then later when I began ironing my own clothing, I loved ironing the creases into my shirts and into my dress pants. Now, if you can find a decent dry cleaner who's still willing to do that, do let me know. I am having a problem, but I digress. There's nothing to this very day like ironing a good, sharp crease into a beautiful garment. Now, I know ironing has gone out of vogue. Clothing with perfect creases either isn't in style or people just can't be bothered to do it. And I understand that, I do. But you know what else is not in vogue that should be? People studying the word of God together. It used to be that almost every adult in a church, especially in this church, went to adult Sunday school, opened up the Bible and talked together, shared together, grew together, sharpened each other's creases. Have you thought about how important it is for all of us to get back to that? It isn't a one-time thing and now you're done, my friends. Most of us have fallen out of this very valuable habit. We're not done. I am asking you today to give serious consideration to this, to choose a Sunday school elective and make it a priority for whatever you're doing at nine o'clock in the morning when we start this back up again on September 12th. It is so important for us as a church community to be iron sharpening iron together. Another passage from Proverbs chapter 19 verse 20 tells us, listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom for the future. Maybe you think, well, I did that. I know enough now. But you know, when the words iron sharpens iron were written for us in the Bible, that was a never-ending, relentless process. Giving a tool the desired sharpness took time. There were no electric whetstones or other sharpening devices. Persistent, careful striking of the tool against the sharpener over and over again was absolutely necessary. And they knew that keeping a tool sharp was a whole lot easier than letting it go dull and having to start all over again. Our proverb emphasizes the importance of diligence, of answering our call from God to keep our wits sharp together as a community. One person does not sharpen another with just one admonishment. That always looks like just an insult, doesn't it? We are not called to just correct, scold, and make others feel inadequate, but to build them up, to teach and guide and gently correct each other, to become sharper, if you will, together. We sharpen each other over time, and that makes learning from one another easier and more acceptable because we know each other. We're in fellowship together. We love each other. We have grace with each other. And in fact, this sharpening each other is just as necessary as reading the Bible alone. Personal and spiritual growth is a mutual concern. I would remind us that Jesus sent his disciples out two by two, study partners. We need solid teaching here in worship. We certainly do. But we also need relationships that will challenge us. And the way to make and grow those relationships is through learning, fellowshipping, and sharpening each other by being in God's word together. Wise people anticipate and adjust to the foolishness around them. The world outside of our church is foolish. We know that. We need to seek constructive spiritual relationships for our lives and for this church as a community. When we are truly wise, we recognize that we will always need to have the wrinkles ironed out, not just by ourselves, but by others for us too. 
The writer of today's scripture from Hebrews reminds us to consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. Not to neglect to meet together, there are some with that habit, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Friends, the day is approaching. I wanna be ready. I wanna know what you know. And I want to tell you what I know. I want to know your kids and your grandkids' names and for us to share our hearts together, to be lifted by you when life is hard, and to lift you up when your life needs a friend. I want to feel comfortable being in deep fellowship with you, and I want you to be so comfortable with me that you will tell me when I have spinach on my teeth. Please. I want to learn and grow with you. And I want you to learn and grow with me. And I want us all to be doing that in varying ways together. I want you to challenge my thinking in a classroom and to have me challenge yours. I want us to agree to disagree when the teachings are hard and to agree sometimes with a, wow, I never thought of that in the process. Not one of us knows it all. But together, we all will know more. And the scripture says we become closer to God. Isn't that our ultimate goal always? We have work to do, all of us, don't we? The day is approaching. Jesus is coming back. So we need to provoke one another to love and good deeds, to meet together and to encourage one another. Let's put those creases back into our lives with a good hot iron. This is how we start. Iron sharpens iron. Amen.
Let's go out today with this paraphrase of our Hebrew scripture from the message on our hearts. Eugene Peterson writes, so let's do it, full of belief, confident that we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He will always keep his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially when we see the big day approaching. Encourage love and help out. Is there a better way to live? Let's go spur somebody on this week, shall we? Amen. You may be seated for the post loot. We just wanted to let you know that someone lost a hearing aid that was laying on the floor in the back. So talk to your neighbor if they didn't hear that announcement, and please let them know. <laughs> that, that.